Hey everyone, it's Lon Gross with the Chaos Group. In this video, I'd like to share a simple approach to image-based lighting using the dome light and V-Ray 1.5 for Rhino. First, let me start by saying I'll be using the 64-bit version of Rhino 5 for this tutorial, but V-Ray 1.5 is compatible with the 32-bit versions of Rhino 4 and 5 as well. I have a simple scene set up here with a snowboard, a pair of bindings, and a cyclorama as my backdrop similar to what you might see when photographing a product in a studio environment. With our materials and geometry already in place, all we need now is the lighting. I'll click on the V-Ray Lights tab, and I'll go over to the Create Dome Light icon. Once I create a dome light in my scene, you'll notice here that in shaded mode, it's blocking the view of the rest of my set. So one thing I like to do for my workflow is select the light, come up to the display properties, choose set object shading attributes, turn that to wireframe, and now we can see right through. One thing to note about the dome light is that its size and placement in the scene won't have any effect on the way it renders. That is, unless you plan to render caustics, which is a topic we can save for another video. With the dome light selected, I'll go to the Properties tab, and I'll choose the Light Properties. Here, we can see all of the dome light parameters. First, let's enable the Use Dome Light Texture. Then, we'll go into the Dome Texture, and I will choose Text Bitmap from the pull-down. I'll go up to the File, and I'm gonna browse and grab my HDR image that we'll use for our image-based lighting. Now, before we go any further with this, I'd like to just jump over to Photoshop for a second. And this is the HDR image that we're using for our image-based lighting. Some of you might recognize this from Paul DeBevick's website. This Kitchen HDR is a full high dynamic range image. And if I come up to my info panel and I switch this to 32-bit mode, you'll see as I move my eyedropper across the image, the values that we get in our readback and our RGB are in the bright areas are greater than one. The V-Ray Light Dome recognizes these areas and adaptively samples them, resulting in great looking image-based lighting. The last thing to notice before we step back into Rhino is that this image is equal rectangular, meaning it's a flattened spherical image, which will require the appropriate UVW mapping coordinates. I'll close Photoshop, and we'll go down to the UVW parameters, and the UVW type, we'll choose UVW Gen Environment, and we'll make sure the mapping type is set to spherical. Once I hit OK, we'll go back to the parameters, and the one thing that I'd like to adjust here is I'd like to turn the subdivisions up to 32. This is going to help us combat some noise in the area shadows of the image. I'll switch to my product shot camera, and we're ready to render. So I'll go up to my V-Ray 1.5 for Rhino tab. I'll select the Render button. and our scene will start to render. I'll go ahead and pause the recording now, and we'll come back once the image is fully rendered. Okay, so it only took a few minutes to render the scene at HD quality, and I think if we turn on our correction controls and come over to the curves here, and add just a slight S curve to our final image, Gonna make sure we turn it on there. I think we'll have exactly what we were looking for. So as you can see, the, the dome light does a pretty nice job adding lights and reflections to the scene. If I open up my history here for just one second and I load in the latest image, I can give you a sneak preview of what our next video is all about, which is 
adding a couple more V-Ray area lights for these reflection cards, as well as giving it uh, some depth of field using the V-Ray physical camera. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure to check out chaosgroup.com for all the latest V-Ray news, and I hope you'll join us next time. Thanks.